Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the last session, we saw how we can use Dataverse and Power Automate to notify some stuff if the data is being updated or recorded and if new data has been added to the tables. And we also had a quick uh, overview of the Dataverse tables. So in this session, as I promised, so we are will be working with the approval flow within the Dataverse table. So in last session, we used one product table. So there we just added one custom column that is product name. But for this approval flow, I would be adding one more column that is approval status. So if I just go to view of this data table and click on active products. So you would see like I added one more column over here is approval status. So you can see in this view, we have product type, product name and the approval status. And if I just go back in data, I would be just showing that to you. So in data, if I just click on add record, you must be seeing like I have added a couple of more fields that is approval status and product type. And to add that you have to, uh, I need to go back or close this window. You need to go to this forms and under the forms, so you can just go to the quick view form. So because this is the form which actually like takes us to that data record so there you have to if you would like to add more fields then you have to click on form fields and drag and drop the things and if you are well versed with the model driven apps then probably uh, creating forms and view you might already familiar with if not then it's simple just drag and drop would require to make your form so i'm just going back because this is not the main topic which i would like to cover today i'll be just going to data and in data, we have these two records where like one is already approved and another is pending state. So I would like to have a couple of more records where like before getting to the approval approved state, I would like to have uh, one approval flow working with it. So now the intent of this video is like we'll be creating one approval flow. So whenever item is added over here in this form, then one approval flow should trigger off and that flow should do the entire processing for us. So now I'll just go back to our last flow. So this was the flow which we created in last session where whenever item is added or modified in this table. So we were notifying the messages in a team cha channel. So that we saw. And now um, I would be just modifying this flow itself to make this uh, as an approval flow. So what step I would be including, I would just include start and wait for approval. So this flow would give me capability where I can just request the approvals. So these are the approval type which I can request for approval is everyone must approve. So whatever the approvers are assigned to, I would be picking if they are approving, if all are approving, then it would be an approved state. If approve and reject first to respond, if anybody responded with uh, first responded with approve or reject, then that would be recorded. So these are the custom responses, wait for all responses or wait for one. So I'll just pick this approve reject first for first to respond. And now I need to fill that out so I can say like please approve product entry and you can just pick the name from dynamic list name of that product and in assign to you can just pick that assign to either like you can have the approval table created over here in your data verse and you can pick the approvers from there and also uh, you can pick any of the uh, if this is being tied up tied up with the, some SharePoint uh, or something like that, then you would be picking that from SharePoint list or group. And right now I'll be just like entering the semicolon separated users so I, because in my environment, I'm the only user. So I need to just pick myself in details. You can pick, uh, you can enter more details. You can create uh, your item link description and have the description item link as well. So for item link, you have to create this link dynamically and the reason is so if I just open this form because these are not, not uh, the same way the driven forms as we used to in SharePoint with the IDs so you have to uh, just a second you have to go to this uh, edit record and then create this 
URL by yourself. So entity record and ATN, this product ID, and this is the unique ID of that row. So I would tell you like how you can extract the unique ID of that row in a while in the same flow. So I'm right now, I'm just leaving it as is. And in like a second step, like where our flow was waiting for approval, what if like uh, when the action is done? So I would be putting one condition and that would check the outcome of this flow. So if I scroll down in the dynamic, dynamic content, you can see outcome of this flow is equal to approve. That means the action taken has been approved. So I can simply update the record back saying that item is approved. So I need to again choose the table. So that is product table. And now I need to pass on the row ID. And if you go to your dynamic content and if you start typing ID, you would only get the ID related to O data ID. So that is not the ID which we want. So here is a, a cache. So we, we were not able to pick anything from this dynamic list. So we have to construct our own row ID or generate get the our row ID. So let me just uh, without updating it, let me just put anything garbage over here in field. Let me just in name, I'll just pick name. It's a required one. So, and in the, if you just click on advanced, it, you will find approval status. So I'll just pick the approved and rest of the stuff. I don't, don't wish to update. So I'm just clicking save. And when I'll try to run this flow, so it should give me error. And why actually what I would like to show you is like, let me just save my flow and go back with any of the previous run. So let me just pick this one. And this when this run was successful. So if I scroll down, you will find in the body, we have this item internal ID. So this ID, we have to pass as a row internal name or the ID so that it can pick it have to update the record. So I'll just copy that item column name into this uh, notepad so that I can compose one data compose operation. So I'll just again edit my flow. We'll go to this and I will use one compose action so that I can extract the value out of that body. So I will just, I have already constructed it. You can see, you have to go to this expression and under expression, you need to just pass on this trigger outputs body slash internal name ID. So this would give you the row ID, which we are going to put over here. So I'm just dragging this update row beneath so that I can pick the output of this compose action until into this row ID. So I am just picking this output row ID. So now this update record would be having a right row identifier. Okay. And in this, uh, I'll just copy this and paste into this the else branch so that I can just say like if it's not approved, then I would be just marking that as rejected, right? So I'm just saving it and this, this compose action, I don't have, so this compose action, either I can move, let's say to the previous tab. So it should be available for both if and else branches. So I'm just copying that compose at top and de deleting this compose because we already have all right, so I have this compose operation which extracted, which gives me the internal ID. I'm using those IDs for making update packs to that row item, update that row with approval branch as an approved and with the rejection branch as a rejected one. So that's how we can just create this flow. So now I'm going to run this flow. 
saving it before that and creating one item so let me just close this window and just add one record so i'll say like it could be a, a television by sony and product type is tv let's say and approval status by default i'll just pick it's a pending so i need not to pick even so you can have one default status as new so when that is saved i'll just go back to my flow to check whether any running instance is there or not so let's see so this is the older one so i'll just wait for a new instance okay so my this new instance is running and it's stuck it's waiting at start for an approval process so i have to either go to my mails to check for the approval email or i can directly go to my teams because this approval emails also comes as a part of this uh, approval notifications under teams so i can just go to my teams and can see if i get any notifications so i got for notification for this that product is television by sony so i can just say approve so this would allow the flow to come to the next branch and you can see we are we have gone to this compose and condition branch so in condition we are able to update the record back with the this row id which we got into this compose action so this is the compose action which we uh, created and now it's updated so if i go back to my data and if i just do a refresh to look at the uh, data then i would see a record updated with as an approved entry so where is that a record so it this was the record so name is television and the status is approved so this is how you can tie up your flow your approval flow with dataverse database so i hope uh, for your requirement where you would like to have the data to be reviewed or uh, approved by somebody before it makes to some approval status approved status which can be in turn used with some other reference tables so this is a way of doing it so if you like the video then please do subscribe